Okay, so welcome back. This is our additional video for part eight, covering the actual um, the annex, annex eight A eight O one. Um, it's split into two parts. It's got um, the first part is an illustration of the Barry Center method with an example of the calculation, and then the second half of it is where you have the tables that help you do an efficiency assessment. So, we've got the Barry Center method. Okay, when designing an installation, consideration should be given to locating transformers and switchboards as close as possible to high energy consumption equipment and systems in order to minimize losses within the installation electrical distribution system. The Barry Center method provides a way of defining the most energy efficient location of the transformers and switchboards in an installation thanks to the reduction of electrical losses. Um, if you do a little uh, search for the Barry Center, it originates in um, uh, like um, in, in science. It, it, the, the, the best example is to do with the um, the rotations of the um, of, for example, the moon and the Earth and the orbiting, uh, and what what the Barry Center is is the it's the it's the um, the point in the center where everything rotates around it. So when you think of the moon rotate, you know, orbiting around the Earth, or the Earth orbiting around the moon, they actually both orbit around each other. It's just obviously with regards to weight and displacement, the central point where they actually orbit around isn't in the middle of the distance between the two it's actually much further towards the earth right on the edge due to the weight and displacement and the actual balance uh, some good videos illustrating and that's what we're going to do here we we'll use calculation to establish where the most central position will be with regards to the amount of power or energy or load around it and the distance away from it so we'll see an example of this so the objective is to install a transformer and switchboard at a location is based on a relative weighting due to the energy consumption of the loads. So the distance to a high energy consumption load is less than the distance to a low energy consumption load. So we're, we're talking here about the point of origin and the sub-main distribution. We're not talking about final distribution here. It's mainly the decision on where to put the plant room, for example. The method enables the equipment location to be defined in order to minimize as much as possible the lengths in the cross sectional area of conductors, increase the size of cables in order to meet the voltage drop limitations, and avoid the higher rating feeders. And we also have mentioned about having bigger cables for um, less energy loss as well. Okay. Each load will be identified by the coordinates of its location. So the first thing you can do is you can go to the customer and you're going to say, What have you got? Where's it going to go? So they're going to say, I've got this here, this here, this here. It's a larger part or larger distribution or larger meshes or or load profiles. Uh, and obviously, depending on if you're on a single layer, a single um, floor or you know multi-floors, you'd either do a 2D or a 3D calculation. Um, so you use the coordinates of X and Y for two-dimensional. You use X, Y, and the Z of the third dimension. There are two formulas depending on which one you're going to use. You're also going to need to know the estimated annual consumption in kilowatts, called the EAC, of this equipment or these loads. So you choose a formula. Um, they look they look scary, but um, you've got the one on the left there, which is the illustration of the two dimension. It just has the location of x and y, or the axis of x and y. And on the on the right, you have the z added there for the third dimension. So the idea is to plot a position. To install your main supply, x along, y up, relative to where the main points of power are around that. So, for an example, in the regulations, we are given four points. We got a logistics storage, which has an estimated annual consumption of 120 kilowatt hours at position of four meters and four meters. We have utilities of 80 kilowatt hours, 9 meters and 1 meter, an office and production. So you can see these are separate meshes. Okay? We select our formula, which is going to be the two dimensional formula, and we um, plot it out. So, breaking it down, let's first of all work on the x axis. So, the x axis, which is of 4 meters multiplied by the EAC plus 9 meters multiplied by the EAC plus 9 meters and then plus 6 meters so you're multiplying each axis by the EAC you then divide that by the total EAC 
you do the same for the y-axis relative to the, 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 the dimensions and you end up with a length of x and a length of y what you're then going to do is plot that and this is illustrated in the regulations the calculation comes out to an x-axis of 6.11 meters a y-axis of 8.44 meters it's not color so what I've done is I've worked it out and I've plotted it for you so we go along the bottom axis x 6.11 meters we go up y 8.44 meters and that black circle there that the green arrow is on is our position so those other four blobs are these logistics storage utilities office and production those are those positions and so we've calculated the best position with consideration of of distance and power that's the best place for our distribution to be installed right there whether that can happen or not who knows but this is what we need to do we need to decide where the, the length is the amount of power that is needed find out the best the best middle point that um, is most suitable it might be that you work out two or three positions and then you have to refer that to the designer because obviously this is going to go in the building it might be a plant room so you've got to make sure it's practicable for it to be put in that position but that is an example of how the barrier sensor method works um, probably as if this gets obviously pushed through it, it should do um, we'll do some more exercises and add a third dimension exercise on that going on to this uh, on from this we also have in Annex B801, which is the other half. You have A801 for the barrier center, B801 for the example of a method to assess energy efficiency of an installation. So, the parameters. The energy efficiency measures are classified according to five levels, which is zero to four. Level four is the highest level. Each level includes preceding ones. So, you need to get a high number. We want a high number. If you're if you're doing nothing to to um, have an energy efficient measure, you're going to get a zero. So this is the load profile determination of the kilowatt hours with load profiles in residential buildings. No consideration. You get a zero. You've done load profile of the installation for a single day, 24 hours. You get a one. You do it for a week you get a two, you do it for a year, you get a three, you get the idea. Same with commercial. So if you've done a low profile, how long have you done it for? Have you done it for a long time or a day? The, the longer you do it for, the, the better understanding you have on energy efficiency, the higher you'll get on your efficiency measure here. So that's low profile. The other one, location of the main substation. We've done the Barry Center method calculation. Has it worked? Well, if there's no consideration, again, you get a zero. You position the main substation within 60% of the distance from the optimal position of the most distant load, you get a one. And then as you can see, the distance, the percentage, the closer the distance from the optimum position to the most distant load, the closer that is, the higher your number, the higher your score. So that's location of main substation motors requiring optimization and analysis if you haven't done it you get a zero 30 percent efficiency of installed power uh, sorry no, to analyze and monitor motors efficiency class or drives for 30 percent you get a one to analyze and optimize you get a two okay so you can see depending what you've done that changes from residential down to industrial because it goes from 70% to 90% so you can see that this is where there's a difference between the two um, sectors okay but the work that you've done to optimize the motors is key here next one lighting requiring optimization analysis no consideration zero you go all the way along control according to natural lighting source and building use to consider the lamp type you get a four Okay. HVAC required optimization analysis, no consideration, is zero. Time and temperature control at zones, broken down into individual zones, you get a four. For industrial commercial, you get sensor control per zone as well. What else? We've got transformers. 
No consideration for Transformers. You get a zero or a one. Selection of all Transformers according to life cycle cost and estimation of magnetic and copper losses and working point losses. You get a four. So you might get fours in some and zeros in others. You kind of tally it up. Wiring system, no consideration, zero. Wiring system was optimized with methods described in 8016367 67, and 73. You get your four. Power factor correction, you get the idea. Compensation with zone and individual compensation, you get a four. No consideration, you get a zero. Level of maximum reactive power is defined is a one for commercial industrial infrastructure. That's good. Okay, uh, that's that, that's power factor correction. This is power factor measurement. Permanent measurement at main switchboard, you get a four. Occasional measurement, a three or a two. Energy, kilowatt hour and power, kilowatt measurement requirement. Okay, so measurement of large equipment in common parts, if any, and measurement by zone, by usage, and by mesh, you get your four. Voltage measurement. Permanent measurement at main switchboard, permanent measurement at main switchboard, distribution boards, and major lo loads. <clears throat> harmonic and interharmonic measurement. Renewable energies. Um, so we've got here to install renewable energy source providing at least 60% of the total installed electrical power available. 10% for commercial, 2% for industrial. That makes sense. Industrial is going to be a lot more aggressive, a lot more demanding. Okay, energy efficiency performance levels. The performance level is classified according to five levels. Okay, so this is similar. This is performance level, not any, not the um, efficiency measure. Okay, minimum requirement for distribution of annual consumption. So this is like how it's performed. Ninety-nine percent of annual consumption can be split between usages. Lighting, HVAC, process, etc., and between zones. That's interesting. Minimum required for reducing the reactive power. Okay, so no consideration for dwellings, commercial, industrial infrastructure, greater than 0 0.95. Minimum required for transformer efficiency. Must be at least 95% to have anything there. Installation profiles. The compilation of the various levels, which is the efficiency measure and the efficiency performance of so the two levels proposed by this part may be used as a basis for building owners, factory managers, facility managers and or end users to build a profile concept for improving the energy efficiency of their installation by using the following tables. This profile may be used as a basis for future labeling or installations of buildings for each type of application, it's possible to estimate the level for each proposed recommendation. All right, so we've we've done those two parts there: the efficiency measure and the performance levels. Right. The following tables, which will, will come through, are a compilation of the outcomes from consideration of all of the tables we've just looked at. For each efficiency measure and energy efficiency performance level. The tables provide the level reached for each item and an allocated score is indicated in the last column according to the following method. So if we have energy me uh, efficiency measure and performance level 0, they are 0 points or nul point. Yeah? If we had a 1, 1 point, a 3, 3 points. Fairly self-explanatory. Each box will be completed after consideration of each efficiency measure and performance level. Where it is not possible to evaluate the correct number of points for a particular energy measure or performance level, a rating of two points should be adopted. For example, a dwelling without a transformer should be quoted two in the box for table B801.6. Okay. So they get a two if they haven't been evaluated. The sum of all points, including the last column, shall be used to estimate the electrical installation efficiency class, which is done in table 19. So you have here 
A summary of the tables down the left there, what they are, low profiles, locations of substations, motors, lighting, then your efficiency measure points tallied up, and then your performance level points tallied up. You then have a conclusion. So you have five electrical installation efficiency classes, zero to four, are defined as a mix of minimum of efficiency measures and minimum of energy efficiency performance levels. So EIEC zero is very low, EIEC four is optimized. The purpose of using these efficiency classifications of installations is to rate the electrical energy efficiency of installations with predefined classes, then try to improve it. And the following table will be used for all sectors of activity. Okay. So electrical installation efficiency class. So there those are your so if if you had dwellings and your total score was less than twenty because you had lots of zeros and ones, your EI E I E C zero. If you had lots of fours and threes and your overall was over fifty then you're four. So you, you're adding all your points together and here, depending on if you're dwellings or except for dwellings, you're going to get your overall score and this is your final score sheet. Last bit here. Example of method to assess energy efficiency of an electrical installation. This is an example of installation profile and installation energy class. Example of energy efficiency profile efficiency measure. Oh, okay, so this is just an example here with the numbers in it. So three. The, so this is this is what we've done. This is this with numbers. So low profile got a three. Location of main substation got a three. Motors got a three. Transformers got a one. Wiring systems got a one. And then you have performance levels. Distribution of annual consumption got a two. Power factor got a one. Yeah. Okay. The total number of points for this installation is twenty nine plus six, which is thirty five. Now that's uh, twenty nine there at the bottom, plus your total there of six. So twenty nine plus six is thirty five. Referring back to here, thirty five. Referring back to here. Oh, less than 36 got us an EIEC of 2 which ain't bad but that obviously um, suggests improvement because you can have a 3 or a 4 if you work harder for it I guess but that's how the scoring works um, if this does stay, stay in and um, get pushed through then what we'll do is we'll look at some further guidance that the IT produce. I've also got um, a code of practice on energy efficiency management which has this information and I will take that out and I'll blow that up and I'll put more examples in if this is the way we're going to move forward. There is a suggestion here that again some of this is designers work, some of this is inspectors work, this may change some of our existing certificates. I know the um, ECA have been saying that the certification is going to have to change to adopt some of this. So we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, I will uh, run through the appendices in the next video and then we'll do a summary at the end. But hopefully, it shouldn't seem too daunting this part eight. It's just, it's just a bit of practice, really. All right. Cheers, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Appendices I'll have out very soon. Cheers. Bye bye.